And to some extent, it's also the presenters. Do they seem like they're interested in this study? Sometimes you come across a poster where whoever's presenting doesn't look like they really want to be there. They don't look like they really want to talk to people. And then you find people that look like they're really excited about this work, and you want to talk to them because you know that that will be an interesting conversation. And even if it's not something in your field, just the fact that somebody is so excited about the work that they've done, is, it makes it fun to discuss the work with them. The types of questions that I ask will depend on what type of poster session it is. Because I, being an instructor, I go to different types of poster sessions. Sometimes I go to poster sessions here at the university where they're students. And if they're students, I'm typically more interested in what they got out of that experience. And what was it like doing this research? What did they learn from it? So I tend to ask them right away, did they enjoy doing this? Um, what did they find that was really interesting about their data? How did they collect their data? What was that whole research experience about? So with them, my, my questions tend to be very general. And a lot of the students I talk to are in areas completely out of my field. <clears throat> so I might be talking to somebody in anthropology or in music or in English. It could be anybody. So I'm really interested in that whole experience. And again, if that student is enthusiastic and they just show a real love for the content, then it makes for an interesting conversation, no matter what the topic is. Whereas I could go to an electrical engineer, which is my field, and if that student is just doing this for a grade or you know, to put on a resume, it's not going to be a good conversation. I'm not going to get anything out of that. And then when I go to professional conferences, well then it's, then I'm a little bit more particular. Then I definitely want to spend my time talking to somebody who's going to give me some great information or tools for my own field. And you know, you could go into a big conference and there could be a hundred posters in there. So you've really got to be particular that those key things like the overview diagrams and big pictures of very clear data descriptive titles that really tell you what kind of information is going to be in there. That's important because I don't have a lot of time in between talks at conferences. I want to get in there and get some important information and move on to the next talk. So for them, I'll ask them more focused questions about maybe data collection methods, instruments they used, um, findings of course. You know, That's really what I want to know is what findings came out of this. So, let's think of a magazine. When you pick up a magazine, and of course you all pick up GQ, you of course turn to the first article, the very first article, the letter from the editor, and you just start reading. But then you think, wait, why does the table of contents not appear until page 100? 100? What's in that other 100 pages? Pictures, nothing but pictures, pictures, pictures. What's in the rest of this magazine? Pictures, 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 pictures. Why do some people start at the back of a magazine when they pick one up? Very weird, huh? How do we read? Let's think about this. So why are things that way? because we want pictures. We want them. One professor told me in confidence, and of course I'm sharing it with the world, but he told me that even when he picks up a new journal in his field, a journal, he starts reading by just looking at the pictures. He tries to understand the entire article just by the pictures, and then if he needs more information, he'll turn to the text. So let's get this right. We want pictures. And in general, we can communicate everything through pictures. So I think I've come up with something revolutionary. It's remarkable. I, I think it's going to make me millions. A picture is worth a thousand words. I know, right? That's good. Now. Let's put this in 
rule terms. If an author can communicate something through a picture, through a figure, that's what we call it, figure, then he should. So, if you can communicate figurally, then you should. We want pictures. That's what we read. That's what we go to first. First thing we look at. We do not start reading from the front of a magazine. We do not start reading all of the text. We look at the pictures first. So how do we design a poster? We've already talked about how people read them. We've talked about how they approach them. So, first rule, figures. Lots of them. If it can be communicated through a figure, it should be. What gets me to a specific poster is, first off, the title. That title has to tell me very quickly whether or not I'm interested. I, I have to know if, if the topic or this study, because usually it's a research project, if that's something that's going to be useful to me. And i got to get that out of the title. And sometimes the titles can be really clever, um, sometimes a little too clever and they don't convey any important information. But when they're a little clever, that, that will attract my attention and that will pull me in and I, I'll spend some time there. a poster with a title like this. Quadrature encoder for drilling rig draw works. That's the first thing you see at the top of the poster. Are you going to be inclined to stop and look at that poster? Well, it really depends on the kind of poster session it is. If this were a general conference, such as a, a, um, a graduate conference that spans all disciplines, you might not be very tempted to look at that poster. But if this is a very specific conference, like the Offshore Technology Conference, maybe you would be more inclined to look at that poster. As it is, is it specific? Would it tell the story about what the poster is about? Well, it could if we knew the terminology. It uses very specific terminology to be specific to a, to a field. So for a general conference, it wouldn't really work. For a more specific conference, it may. So let's say we then come across a poster with this title, live from the OR, it's Operation C-Section. C-Section. It's, it's a lot more catchy than the quadrature encoder for drilling rig draw works. No doubt about it. This is um, would grab my attention much better. But it's almost too catchy. It, ref it does not describe what the actual poster is about. What did they do? Are they just telling how to do a C-section? Are they making a movie about C-sections? We, we don't really know. It's a cute, catchy title, but it doesn't tell a lot about the project. Would it be good for a general conference? It could be if all you want to do is get people's attentions just to show them what a C-section is. Would it be good for a specific conference in the nursing field well it it would really not be specific enough people would not understand what it was here we have another example of a title reflected light curves of extrasolar planets I would probably be willing to stop at this one if I were in the field it's very specific it's not catchy there's no live from the OR but it's, it acts as a mini abstract. It wants to tell me exactly what this poster is about. And I like that. I'm probably going to be drawn to it.